What's up, everybody? It's your boy. Y'all already know what it is. Y'all already know what we're here for Real Housewives of Atlanta season eight. This is episode what seven. All right, y'all already know what it is. So, if you dare, get your cups ready, and let's go ahead and get into this shit, shall we? So they, they give me what I need with this shit right here. We already getting this shit popping off and whatnot. Okay, I'm gonna try to get this so I don't have to necessarily pause it. So I'm gonna try to go ahead and speed this shit up. Uh, so they play the Never Have I Ever game, and I believe, and I say believe, y'all. Let me know down there if I'm wrong. I believe it was Shamir that was like, Never Have I Ever. I had to go to shower or some shit like that. And Sheree and Horsha go ahead and uh, drink on that. I, all right, um, <clears throat> Kim leaves out of that question to call her husband. And again, my thing is this, you already know the group of women you came on this trip with. So, you know, dare I say it, all right, why the fuck she here? I was here for Kim, I was trying to give her a pass. I can't give her a pass right now, fuck it. Uh, the guys are asking where are they staying because now they're back at the house and everybody kind of looking like, who the fuck is whistle, what is this, what? And you know, Candy's trying to figure out it's pretty much asking, Hoppo, who are these people? That, that's what uh, Candy is asking. Now, Glenn, now they're outside. Glenn walks up and congratulates Candy, right? And it's a matter which he did was a little, you know, abrasive. And she's strong because she don't know who the fuck she, he is. And you know, she kind of like, oh, okay, well, thank you. And you know, he kind of snaps at her a little bit. I think we're all fucking confused right now. I'm fucking confused. The only thing I can think is, well, I mean, he was drunk, can't have his liquor, but I digress. What else? So, but Oliver's talking, I'm not Oliver. Uh, Glenn is talking about disrespect, you know, more of a candy and how he will flip if he feels disrespected, all right? So, um, Oliver appears to be enthralled with uh, Horsha, all right? So I guess that's good stuff, even though she's giving me nothing but thought and I'm not even gonna talk more about her because we all know, y'all know how fuck I feel about her, so fuck that. Uh, Tammy, uh, so you know, Kenya is flirting with Glenn, and I guess she starts to see the crazy. So she gets up and talks to Candy. Her and Candy are conversing about how they think that this motherfucker is, you know, weird. Don't don't say the fucking say, say the real motherfucking word. The motherfucker crazy, okay? Like Kenya want to play crazy. You just saw fucking crazy, okay? You y'all see Ike right here? Yeah, crazy. I yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying crazy. Alright. What the fuck else? Um let me let me grab my damn remote just in case the shit pop on. I might have to pause it on y'all ass. Um <clears throat> so Tammy is faded. We see that. And uh Kenya wants Glenn gone, so she co uh conveys this to Tammy. So uh Cynthia and Tammy decide, you know what, we're gonna go to bed because they see what's about to come and they just wanna get the fuck out of Dodge. So Tammy, you know, pretty much gathers her uh nephew and her nephew's friend <clears throat> and pretty much is like okay you gotta go and you know she somewhat tries to explain what's going on to him and Kenya then addressed him because he wants to know what the deal is so she like look I tried to talk to you you came to me like this you being like this and we wipe the woo and he pulls away like snatches away from Tammy and is calling her a little bitch and shit. Now, Tammy, her drunk ass, trying to sit here. And first and foremost, here's the thing, ladies. I want some real shit. When a dude is in his feelings, and when a dude, when you see the Hulk is coming out to do, when you see Ike Turner coming out to do, don't don't grab him. Cause in her trying to get in front of him, and he pushed the fuck out of her. So either a this leads me to believe that one. Glenn checked out, and Ike Turner checked in. That's either a or b. That really wasn't a. Uh, Tammy's uh, nephew so yeah the shit's back on I'll be right back <laughs> first let me say I need to get this motherfucking episode saved to my damn computer some way some motherfucker how because I just got my motherfucking life rest of this episode probably gonna be shit but fuck let's go <clears throat> all right so what I didn't say is when you know uh 
Glenn was walking towards Kenya. She called for security. That's when he pushed Tammy and whatnot. So Glenn is apprehended. Uh, Tammy somewhat comes back to she's uh you know sent away in the uh, ambulance. Cynthia feels like it's her fault for bringing Tammy to the group. <clears throat> so she's feeling you know she's uh guilting herself. <clears throat> and Kenya's trying to tell her no don't blame yourself and now these two are kind of going at it because they disagree on the matter man <clears throat> so uh, they go back and forth and then Cynthia decides okay I'm going to go check on Tammy which she should have just when she heard about it should have went and checked on Tammy in the first damn place just saying um, <clears throat> so Fakedra you know literally throws her thing on Kenya and horse your co-signs. Now what I'm going to say is this. I slightly agree that Kenya shouldn't have said shit. She should have just let Tammy deal with her nephew and that just been it. But at the same exact time, she said what the fuck she said and that's what the fuck she said. I mean, of course it was some other bullshit, but she said what the fuck she said. <clears throat> so Kim says that, you know, neither one of them were in uh, their clearest mind. So pretty much added negativity didn't help. Pretty much just saying, you know, you add fuel to the motherfucking fire. <clears throat> Kenya walks away and pretty much is saying, you know, no finger pointing. And Kim says she wants to go to a hotel. Horsha, you know, wants to address Kenya because she wants to know, like, you know, what happened. And pretty much is going to throw the entire blame on Kenya. <clears throat> so... As they're conversing, you know, Kenya says, okay, well, look, I felt weirded out by the motherfucker. And, you know, of course, Horsha feels whatever kind of fucking way she does. And then Kenya is just like, I don't know what they went through, but I know when he came at me, you know, I felt some kind of way. <clears throat> and, you know, I'm fucking pregnant. You feel what I'm saying? So now, because, okay, well, since Horsha heard it from somebody else, okay, y'all already know I never seen it for Horsha or Fake Trus, so I'm just throwing it out there. <clears throat> so um <clears throat> next morning Candy's on the phone with Ty. Apparently she talked to him about the shit, you feel? Me? And uh Ty pretty much is like letting her ass know you need not be putting yourself in these motherfucking situations and I'm pretty sure Ty told her ass, get your ass on that motherfucking plane and bring your ass on. Wish we could have heard the original conversation, that would have been nice. <clears throat> now uh Kenya comes in, is bringing her breakfast, and she sees that she's getting ready to go this, that, and motherfucking third. And Candy begins to, you know, tell the story of what happened last night, and then in walks Cindy. Now, at first glance, I'm thinking, you know what? Candy is sitting here hyping this shit up for no motherfucking reason. She's talking about how Tammy came back with her nephew and played nephew. I'm like, man, she put motherfucking 20 on 10. I had to eat my words. And this is me confessing to y'all. That's what the fuck I was thinking, right? This whole and sat here and recorded the whole motherfucking thing. And it showed they asked what the fuck went down because she was saying that they heard that she was at the door, so they starting to scout a little bit. So Horsha opens the motherfucking door, right? She said, Tammy, Tammy is giving her there's a motherfucking I just came from the motherfucking crib. Tell from the crib keeper ass motherfucking I just came back to life. <laughs> And she kind of closed the door. <laughs> I'm sorry, this shit was hella fucking funny. And then they still scurrying and whatnot. And then Kenya decides she wants to reenact what she just saw. And you know what I'm saying? Cynthia feels some kind of way. My thing is, is if you feel some kind of way, you shouldn't have watched this shit. It is what the fuck it is. But this shit right here gave me all the motherfucking excitement that I fucking needed. But I'm going to press play and I'll be right the fuck back. Alright, so, oh fuck, I didn't just up and change channels accidentally and shit. Hold, hold on, gotta get this shit back. Alright, got it. <clears throat> Alright, so, uh, Sheree is working now and Phaedra, you know, comes to talk to him and whatnot. And she used this opportunity to, you know, bash Kenya and talk shit on her, about her, about how, like, all this is shit is, you know, her fault and whatnot. <clears throat> when it's clear that, okay, she wasn't there for the whole entire thing. So, I'm not really feeling that. Then uh, she decides to bring up Mike Brown and says that, uh, you know, she was there with her mother, this, that, and the third. The fact that she has boys, this could have been any one of our boys and whatnot. 
<clears throat> and you know began to bring up Sandra Bland and everybody else doing the whole Black Lives Matter thing. I'm you know what thank you for the public service announcement, but I do not follow her on social media. So y'all let me know what stance has she made about any of this shit. You know what I'm saying? I got it. Use this platform for it. But my thing is this you ain't said shit about it, and now we saying some shit about it. The fuck out of here. Anyway. Um everybody on the bus now, of course, uh Candy went home, come to find out that, uh, what's her girl name? Uh, Kim went home too. And, um, <clears throat> what else? Sin, uh, Cynthia calls Tammy. She says no concussion. Uh, all she had was some bruises. Uh, Fatra invites her over for, you know, dinner and whatnot. And my whole thing is, which that's a nice gesture. But if y'all was sitting here clowning this girl, you feel what I'm saying? But you invite her over for dinner like some fake motherfuckers. But again, this is why this motherfucker right here keeps his circle this motherfucking small. I ain't got time for that fake shit. In the way. Um, <clears throat> so they are all are getting their little hummers to, you know, drive around and see Miami and the shit look cool. I'm like, I right, I can get with that, you know, somewhat fun and whatnot. Of course, Kenya threw shade at Kim, you know, it's to be expected. Um, <clears throat> so Kim is, now she's at home, uh, at the park with her uh, husband and children and, you know, she begins to, you know, for, for lack of better terms, have pillow talk with her husband. And, uh, you know, he's happy that she distanced herself from the situation, which I'm like, I right, cool, got that. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, her whole thing is, make sure I got my damn notes and shit right, hold on. Uh, you know, she uh, starts to bring up, <clears throat> one, she feels that Kenya just starts shit. <clears throat> Two, she started to see a pattern of, you know, okay, you, I guess, maybe mad, you're gone, you're gone. She was like, what next? She going to say me and me and roller skate, so now I'm going. And it's one of those where I kind of get where Kim is going, but just like Kim was trying to tell Kenya back uh, when they had a little tiff that you didn't let me explain this, that, and third, so you don't know what I was trying to say. You didn't get the whole story from her. So again, like I said, it's just like me sitting here commenting on it. I don't know everything because I don't see what's on the cutting room floor. <clears throat> but for her to jump to such a quick conclusion like that, it, it is what it is. Everybody's going to make their, you know, assessments and judgments based off their fucking vantage point. It is what it is. <clears throat> but, you know, again, I'm not really here for her husband. How the fuck you know he talking and whatnot. You know, I'm, I'm starting to get that Mitch from him. You know, I don't know. I don't like that. And, uh, you know, she brings up the project, which I was going to bring up the project one day in my trending topics video. If y'all haven't seen it, I'll leave a link for that shit. But, you know, she was just saying, given all this, she doesn't know how she's going to work with her. And, you know, it's one thing if you <clears throat> bringing me Game of Thrones, I might deal with the bullshit. But my thing is this. From what I'm hearing, you own this show because uh, you need the motherfucking money. So my thing is this, you know, uh, when money talk, bullshit walk. And the fact that they even show like a flashback clip of when she was watching it with her husband. And <clears throat> he was like, who is that Kenya? Oh, she needs to be recast. Bruh. 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 That's all I can say. I don't have a whole lot right now. But uh, uh, Horace is getting ready for a day with Oliver. And, you know, Fate go like, <clears throat> again. She don't read on her motherfucking feet often. You know, she has a little one-liners, but she tells her, <clears throat> you know, you have to be worthy of a ring. I wonder if anybody else caught that, but that's your motherfucking friend, though. Anyway, <clears throat> and that's a reference to a date with Oliver. So, uh, Horsha opens, uh, I'm sorry, tells Oliver that he met her under, I guess, unusual different circumstances, her, you know, being a thought and shit. And his old thing is he was in mind the fucking view this that motherfucking third, you know he he enjoyed seeing her ass and shit, and he was just like, I right, well, you know it looked like you do squats, and she you she like I ain't gonna be squatting on that dick. That made me think about Johnny Blaze. Squats don't work for me worth shit. It actually gets on my nerves, so I don't do them anyway. I squat on some dick. Anyway, so. He moves in for a kiss <clears throat> and she pushes him off like, oh, whoa, hold the fuck on. And then at the end of the day, she go ahead and gives him a kiss. She comes back home well, to the place and, you know, talks to the girl shit. And this one thing that I'm going to say on some real shit, not to say this many times, 
men will only treat you the way that you present yourself and you treat yourself. So, and here's the thing: you can tell that <clears throat> even though Portia has a persona of being a, a thought, she not really one. Because when he went in for the kiss, she would have went right the fuck in with him. So you can tell that a lot of this is fucking put on. Him. And again, it's one of those where just like again, you, and not on some real shit. If she keep on presenting herself like this. What like I said on some real shit, I'm not wishing no bad on no harm on her, but <clears throat> she gonna be real thrown when the wrong motherfucker step to her and start treating her the way that she is presenting herself. That's all I'm saying. Like, so hopefully <clears throat> y'all get a little bit of <clears throat> inspiration, negative wisdom, what the fuck we gonna call it, right here. Alright, let me go ahead and wrap this up. Before I say what I'm about to say, let me start off by saying and he think he's slick because he pushed work out in New York back in half an hour to bring us Watch What Happens Live, right? Yeah, I smooth clicked off that. You're not going to get my fucking view because he already knows that <clears throat> in him doing it by the way that he was doing it, he's not getting the viewership. So he's trying to do whatever the fuck it is that he wants to do. I don't know if y'all stuck around, but fuck, I didn't. I'm going to go ahead and finish this, get this shit uploaded, and that's going to be it, right? So, <clears throat> <clears throat> excuse me. Candy come back, we learned that um, Kayla's back in school, she's working at the airport, so you know she's doing her own little thug business, so you know, tip the yam off the hook. Alright, <clears throat> and Candy mentions uh, Fatra's uh, split personality to uh, Todd, <clears throat> and you know, it's, you know it was one of those, she was like, her being that other side of her, it was nice, we got along, but she still owe my man some money, moving on. Kim and Kenya meet up, <clears throat> and again, if y'all ain't seen my trending topics video, go see that shit. I even got everything in the, in the description box where if you wanted to click on a certain part, you can go click on that certain part. But I think this might be the reason that Kenya said what she said in that magazine. I'm sorry, that Kenya said what she said in the magazine about Kim probably has something to do with this altercation. And I'm thinking that this altercation and the fact that Kim, I guess, questioning somewhat, you know, bowed up to Kenya is part of the reason that she probably got the peach i'm thinking i don't know but i'm i can kind of see there might be some tips between them later on we'll see but <clears throat> they rehash the trip kenya mentions you know her family struggle and i guess that being a reason that you know she left kim bows up now we ain't seen kim bow up yet but she bows up at that and she says uh she <clears throat> felt that kenya was manufacturing drama and she tells kenya you know and here's the shit that got me sure. Like, let's be clear, sweetie. Right there, that's one of those things where it's just like, okay, see, that shit is very condescending. You know what I'm saying? Because if a motherfucker talking to me, even if we only a few months apart, be like, hey, look, young buck. It's one of those ways like, okay, you trying to, you know, display some fucking dominance and shit, and you trying to come for me, and then that's some shit you not finna do. Like, my thing is, is I will respect my elders, but truth be told, Yarel has one motherfucking mother. Her name is Rosetta only has one that is the only one that's gonna she is the only person that gets a pass to say anything fucking crazy to me the only fucking person let's be clear about that but again kim wasn't talking to me she was talking to kenya <clears throat> but she's like let's be clear sweetie when you provoke somebody and accuse them of things that is something i will not take part of again pushing everything on kenya and Kenya says that, you know, that is not what happened. And Kim says, yes, it was. I was there. And, of course, Kenya, you know, brings up her receipts. <clears throat> because the reality was, in a lot of these different instances, either A, Kim wasn't there, or she was not close enough to either hear or see a lot of the shit that was going on. You feel what I'm saying? Like I said, let me be clear. I am not Team Toro, but I will say I do feel that Kenya should not have addressed Glenn and should have let Tammy deal with it and got his ass on about the motherfucking room and whatnot. But at the same exact time, outside of that, she wasn't wrong for anything that she fucking did. And then, and Oba want to know what the deal was, so she answered the fucking question. You know what I'm saying? And uh, Kim says uh, <clears throat> she left because she didn't feel safe. Which is contrary to how she been making this shit seem. Because Kenya did make a good point that, you know, <clears throat> she felt like she was just waiting for a reason or something to, you know, justify her leaving. And this was it. I do agree with that. So Kenya makes nice with her and they agree to disagree. So that was the episode. Hopefully y'all got 
not guys because it's a mixed group but i don't mean that anyway but hopefully you all enjoyed this review and all this other shit again check me out on all my fucking social medias and whatnot if y'all haven't seen my love hip-hop you know review for season i'm sorry season six episode two of new york check that out there should be an e-card in here somewhere also check out my trending topics video that will be here too <clears throat> check out my uh, uh, uh facebook fan page when i get leaks that's where this shit gonna be at rate comment, subscribe and share i will see y'all for the next video which will be workout new york peace